This is the WP Elevation Podcast, helping WordPress consultants elevate. G'day, Troy Dean here from WP Elevation, and I'm very pleased to have with me all the way from the USA, Bill Ballou. Hey, good evening, Bill. How are you? Great, Troy. How about you? Thank, thanks so much for inviting me to be on, on, on your show. I really appreciate that. Absolute pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Now, where, whereabouts are you in the States exactly? I, I live in San Jose. And yes, I know the way, if you know that song. <laughs> uh, I, I live literally, I'm probably about three miles from Google headquarters, about a mile and a half from Yahoo headquarters, another, another three miles from Apple, and another two miles from, uh, from Intel. And I'm, I'm right in the very heart of Silicon Valley. They're building a new LinkedIn building. I can hit it with a rock from my house. Wow. Awesome. So you're, yeah. you're, like, you're, you're right, in the, right in the heart of where it's all happening. Well, there is so much going on here. And then people talk, talk search engines. They talk about that so much. They leave algorithms laying on the floor. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm right in the middle of the whole mess here. <laughs> what that really means is my, my mortgage is really expensive. Right. <laughs> For those that don't know, just I'm going to give you a quick, a quick introduction here. Bill is a pro blogger who achieves 600,000 page views a day and has had 100,000 page views in an hour. And we're going to ask him about that a little bit later on. Uh, makes his living through blogging, has said that hunger is more important than passion, speaks Japanese as well as English, so we might do I a do. couple of questions in Japanese just for fun. Um, he teaches everything he knows at the Inbound Marketing University, and he's given presentations on a cruise ship throughout the Caribbean. That's fascinating. I saw you speak at Pressnomics this year, and you were larger than life. Your energy and your passion was literally just falling off the stage, but there was this message that you had which we're going to talk about, and I just knew that I had to get you on the pod, on the podcast. And today, one of the one of the key things we're going to talk about today is how important it is to just hit the publish button, which is your mantra, which I just love. Um, quick announcement for competition: Bill's written a book called Marketing with Social Media. I'm going to give a copy of that book away. Stick around for details on how you can win that later on. Um, in the meantime, though, let's before we start talking about the web, Bill, when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Well, b- believe it or not, I wanted to be a preacher. Huh. You know, uh, the, the church dude. I, I, I can remember very specifically, I was probably eight or nine years old. I'm sitting in a church, and uh, it, the, the preacher wasn't dynamic. He's not a hellfire and brimstone guy. He was just a real soft talking person. But I looked around me, and everybody was looking up at him, listening to him. And I thought, that's cool. Look at all those people listening to that guy talk. And so I, I thought I wanted to do something like that. I didn't know what that was. But then I learned that people could do that in a foreign language. You know, they call them missionaries. So I said, I want to learn a foreign language and go overseas and do that sort of thing. You know, so I always wanted to be in a position where I could give stuff to people that would make their life better. Wow. And do you remember, that, do you remember when you first discovered the internet and thought that that was an idea worth uh, playing with? Well, I, I, I remember very specifically. I was, I was looking this up not long ago. Apparently, the, the internet came live around 1990 when Berners Webb created it, 91 when he first published things. So about 92, I mean, almost right after the fact, 92, 93, I was living in Japan at the time, and I was visiting one of my students in Indiana. She was going to Indiana University, and she was playing around on, on, the, on her computer, and she could make things hop from here to there. And I went, wow, look at that. Isn't that cool? And I didn't know how to do it, but then I went back to Japan. One of my biggest obstacles was I had to learn how to use the web in Japanese before I learned how to use it in English. Wow. So I had to learn how to use computers in Japanese before I had to learn how to learn them in English. I came back, edit, oh, that's edit. I didn't know what, it was henshu. I didn't, I didn't know what anything was in English. I mean, it was, it was, it was, lights went on. Yeah, I can figure this out now. Wow. I usually just hit buttons. I hit the button, I hit the button and, and watch what happened. And, oh, that's what happened when you hit this button. <laughs> and that's how I learned how to use the computer. So it's about 90, 93, early, very early 90s when I discovered the web. Wow, fascinating. And um, do you remember the first time you saw the WordPress dashboard? The first time I saw WordPress was probably 2007. So I started blogging in 2006. We started on a, the, the, the people I was writing for, they used TypePad. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I thought, man, this is pretty clunky. But well, I didn't know it was what it was. I, you know, you don't know any better. You just, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. And then I tried Blogger. And I thought, man, this is, this is weird too. And then somebody showed me WordPress. Oh, my goodness, I can do this. It's like writing an email. I mean, if you can write an email, you can use WordPress. How hard can this be? And then, like, why does everybody make it so hard? And, and so WordPress was about 2007. I said, get me on a WordPress platform. And as soon as I got on there, I could just, I could just publish away. I mean, it, it was great. Wow. 
All right, fast forwarding to uh, today. When you meet someone for the first time and they say, Bill, wh- wh- what do you do? How do you describe what you do in one sentence? What's your elevator pitch, so to speak? Hi, my elevator pitch is it's either you or they or the company. So I'll, I'll use you. It says, you have a website. You want more people to come to your website. That's what I know how to do. Ah, nice. I like that. That's, you know what I like about that? It's now, really that's succinct. a very short version. Now, they're going to say, well, what, what does that mean? You want real? You want relevant? And there's, I can expand on that. But fundamentally, everybody has a website. Everybody wants more people, real people to that website. And I know how to do that. Yeah. So it's, I, I like that because it's really succinct. But also I like that because it's not just that you're not talking about you. You're talking about the benefit that I might receive from working with you. Well, I, see, I, I never think about those things. You're probably smarter about that than I am. <laughs> I, 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 I just, you know, I got dragged into this kicking and screaming. Seriously, you know, I, I didn't. Want, I don't want to do the consulting thing. I wanted to blog, and I wanted people to leave me alone. You know, <laughs> I, I taught university for so many years, and and that was fun. I came back to America. I started teaching university again, and I don't know about down under, but here there is so much drama in the classroom. It's just, oh, kill me. You don't like me because I'm white, because I'm black, because I'm gay, because I'm not, because I'm a girl. I said, shut up. You're just a number on my screen. Leave me alone. (laughs) But I got so many people coming to my website. People say, Bill, how did you do that? How did you do that? I said, leave me alone. They kept asking me how you do that, how I got so many people. So then I started figuring things out. So I got kind of got dragged into this kicking and screaming. So I don't really think about pleasing people. Right. Now, although I love people. You know, that, that, that's kind of a contradiction. I don't really think about that so hard. I, you know, I just know how to do this and people keep asking me, so, okay, let me tell you how I do it. Yeah. It's, a, it's really nice that you've kind of arrived at that elevator pitch organically because it, it's, it's a really, um, I, I like it. It's very succinct and it, and it tells me straight away what I'm going to get when I, you know, if, I work, if we work together. So what do you actually... You should ask me why, why I start charging people to do this. I used to do this for free. Uh-huh. But you need to ask me why I don't do it for free anymore. Well, I think the answer is obvious, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Why don't you do it for free anymore? All right. Well, thank you for asking me that, Troy. <laughs> so I, I, you know what, you know what Meetup.com is. Uh-huh. They got these. Well, we got Meetup.com up here. And I used to, uh, you know, I, I like to teach. It. It's like fun. Let me teach you something. So I would teach people how to do this. And so when people came to my Meetup, I would say, okay, if you take me out for dinner or lunch, I will answer all your questions. All you have to do is buy me lunch. I got a lot of free lunches that way. I gained weight, but I got a lot of free lunches that way. <laughs> And these two guys from eBay, you know, eBay is about 11 miles from my house. Right. They're, working, they're working full-time at eBay. They had a part-time job. They're cr- trying to create an online, online entity. And they said, Bill, can you teach us how to get more traffic? So I did. I said, do this, 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 and this, and this. And so they went away. About a month and a half later, they came back and said, can we buy you lunch again? Well, yeah, I like lunch. Sure. And so they took me out to lunch and said, Bill, everything you told us worked. We started getting well over a thousand people a day. We started making well over a thousand bucks a month, and we showed our traction to a potential investor. And that guy gave us four hundred thousand wow. dollars, so that we could further build our traffic or f- further build our business. And I'm sitting there thinking, okay, and, and how much of that am I going to get? And all, and what they said was, what else can you teach us? I said nothing. It was totally uncool. They gave me a hundred bucks. You know, hundred bucks. Thank you, Bill. I'd still do it for free because I wouldn't know any better. But it was at that point where I realized when I was teaching these people something, it could make a huge difference in their life, and everybody wasn't playing fair. Wow. That's a fascinating story. What, what, so we're going to get into this a little bit more, but what do you think it was that you were able to teach them that they weren't able to figure out themselves? Is it because they're just too close to the forest, they can't see the trees? Like, what, what is it? Well, they, they were so busy worry, worried about back end. All they, all they care about was the back end. Let's get my H you know, let's get my H one headings right. Let's get my H two heading. Let's get the meta descriptions and the meta tags. You know, they, I, I tell people there are two hundred and twenty things you can do to a website, but uh, to to one page to make it perfect. Here, I got to we got to stop here for a minute. Hey hey, who's There's this? my little girl. Hi, <laughs> Say hi Troy. Hi. Oh, I gotta get a hug. Okay, <laughs> Daddy's busy right now. Okay, sweetie. All right, let me go. Okay. Daddy, it's okay. Sit on the sofa. Hey, you can sit on the sofa. I'm sorry about that. No worries. And so what they were doing, they were so busy, they, they thought SEO was something you did on the back end. And for me, SEO is something you do on the front end. The you know, search engine optimization is, is, is very simple. It's, it's writing good stuff that people like to read and search engines can find. Mm. And they were so concentrated on what search engines could find, they forgot about what real people want to read. 
Mm. And so I taught them about titles and, 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 you know, keyword, very specific keyword density. Don't, don't get killed by this and how to create original content. Just some very, very basics. And when they started applying those principles, it started working. Wow. And now they're, now they're an inbound marketing entity and, and, and they provide content for people using the same things I taught them. Wow. They still don't share. Wow. <laughs> so so what, do you, what do you spend most of your time actually doing day to day these days? Ah, day to day. Truth be told, I spend most of my time thinking. Right. I just sit and think. I mean, I, I flip through pages online. I, I do a lot of reading. I, I just finished the uh, Winston Churchill biography. That big fat book took me a whole year to read the dumb thing. Wow. But you know, it was real cool about Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill wasn't Winston Churchill till after he was sixty years old. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, you know, that, that fascinated me. So I, I, I read for inspiration. I, I search to try to get ideas. And I just sit and think. I think how I can use my team better. I think about, you know, if I'm going to write, how I can write. If I'm going to be asked to speak, how can I articulate better? You know, how, how can I come up with a su succinct uh, elevator pitch? I just, I, I just think on those things all the time. Wow. Um, and, 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 you, and so you write. You, 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 uh, you, you blog. Actually, no, I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to talk about your blogging process in a little while. In terms of your business, what's the one thing that keeps you awake at night? The the one thing that keeps me, yeah, I I have I have two key people. I have a, I have a senior project manager and then I have a senior salesperson, and underneath them is a bunch of other people work. But my my, I, I want to know how I can keep them focused on what it is they should be doing. <laughs> You know, so I, I'm, I'm my senior project manager, I love him. He's, his name Kevin. We'll talk about him later. The problem with Kevin is he's an engineer. He'll use ten words when two's enough. <laughs> He'll just talk people to death. And so I'm trying to trying to rein him in. And 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 my senior salesperson Josie, she's just golden, but she's just as flighty as can be. She's here. I hope she doesn't watch this. She's all over the place. So trying to how how can I focus my team better? How can I motivate them? How can I keep them? If they're doing their job, I don't have to worry about it. I can go do other things, like go to Pressnomics, for example. Yeah. So, so how how do you get how do you get people to play your game? How do you get people on the same page? How do you how do you motivate them and, and keep them focused? Uh, you won't like my answer. <laughs> well, I yell at them. <laughs> I do. I yell at them a lot, and, and and I don't I don't condescendingly yell at them. You know, whenever they contradict me. And, and I, I say this very matter-of-factly. Whenever they contradict me, I say, well, how many people have come to your website? Yeah, right. And, 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 and oh, okay, we get it. And so, you know, Kevin, he overanalyzes this thing. about well, Kevin, how many people come to your website? Well, Kevin's been very successful in a very specific niche. In fact, he's done so well. That's why he came on my team. He, the, the guy was a, a, a home remodeler, which was a euphemism for he fixed toilets. Right. <laughs> he, call, he called himself a home remodeler. It was great. But he, he, you know, there are, two pe there are two reasons why businesses fight. One, they have too much money. The other one, they don't have enough money. And so he was fighting with his buddy because they didn't have enough business. He said, well, I think I'll go to how to blog. And so I taught him about local SEO, how about local, you know, hyper-local marketing, how to write content. So he wrote about fixing toilets in, in Palo Alto, fixing toilets in Cupertino, fixing toilets in, in all the local areas around here. Within four months, he went from one phone call a month to one phone call a day. Wow. And then they didn't have time to update the thing anymore because they had too much business. They had a four-month backlog. So Kevin just got bitten by, by God. You know, if, if you just do what Bill tells you, it works. And, that, and then he came to work for me. And then Josie was the same thing. She sells cutting boards. And I mean, she just, it, it doesn't really matter. But they, they, when they got bitten, then they came. But you know, when somebody knows a little, they think they know a lot. Right. And so I, I just need to keep focusing. So my, my primary emphasis, maybe it's because I'm stupid, but I just want things to be simple. It's not hard. Like you mentioned earlier, just create good content. It's nothing but website, website, a, a good solid web, a WordPress website plus good storytelling. Mm. You know, storytelling is another word for you know, uh, good content, mm. you know, focused content. Website plus storytelling equals inbound marketing equals people call you up. Wow. And, and so we, keeping them focused is my challenge. When you lay it out like that, it, it, is, it is quite simple. And I, people do overcomplicate this way more than it needs to be, yeah? Well, I'm sure, they, sure they do because they think if they know a lot, they can do a lot. And so sometimes the, best, the most important lessons is knowing, not what, knowing what not to do. Yeah, right. You know, so if you could, I, I, I'm looking at your website. You said, if I can't tell you how to manage your time better, then I'll give your money back, right? Mm. 
I say you say that. Well, telling people what we're not to waste their time is a, is a extremely important lesson. Mm. And so when there's 220 parameters that you can do on a website, I've learned there are 10 will give me 95% of the results I want. Yeah, yeah. But everybody wants to spend their time saying, I know the other 210. <laughs> so, so what? Well, I know them too, but I don't waste my time over there. So keeping my team focused. That, and, and so I, I just pound on that and pound on that and pound on that. And, and, and if I can keep them focused, we'll get better results in the, in the long run. Awesome. What do, you, what do you do when you're not working? How do you, how do you unwind and chill out? Uh, you presume that I don't work sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so what I do when, I, when I'm not working is I, and you're going to think I'm a dirty old man, I am a princess expert. A princess expert. You betcha. I know all the princesses. I, I do. Uh, you know, we just, my daughter and I, we just went to see um, Frozen. They're the two newest Disney princesses. Right. You got Princess Anna, Princess Elsa. Yeah, we know princesses, and we're going to Disney World later on this month. Daddy. And so I, honey, you can't talk now. Okay. Can sure. That's not the hardest two things. Okay, you better first hurry up. First Sorry. of all, Gong Gold had the first one on his computer. He had frozen on his computer. See, I know this. Japanese. And, and Japanese. Japanese and English. And Chinese. Mm -hmm. Nope. One of those two, and he went to your blog too. Oh, he went. He went to our blog. Okay, I'm sorry. About that. <laughs> and so I, I, my, I, I have, I have kids your age, and then I have a five year old. Wow. I don't know how old you are, but my, my oldest son is 31, and I have a 27 year old, and then Mia is five years old, uh -huh. and she's just golden. And so I, I research princesses. Wow. Because I want to know what she knows, right? And so she has her own website. My daughter, go to, I want everybody to go there. Go M I A M E I dot com, Mia May dot com. M I A M E I dot com. Beautiful. So she writes about growing up as a, you know, growing up as a bicultural Chinese American little girl in, in Silicon Valley. Wow. So I, I got invited to Singapore. I'm, I'll be in Singapore, I think it's the end of May next year, to a bunch of Chinese English bi cultural writers and they invited me to come speak to them so I decided to create a website for her to show them how it's done and she's had she's got about nine or ten thousand visitors so far it's about four months old she has nine ten thousand visitors and twenty twenty thirty thousand page views wow just about writing about growing up as a bicultural child and so that, that's how I spend my time trying to you know show her that if she hits that publish a button enough she can change the world Wow, that's fantastic. Now, she'll probably, they don't make five-year-olds the way they used to, so she doesn't work very hard. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, where did the name Pro Blogger Wilby come from? Well, Pro Blogger, uh, yeah, but it's got to be a professional blogger kind of a dude. But my son, my older son, he calls me Wilby, as in William is my first name, Will. My last name starts Baloo, B. Uh, so he just kind of blended in together, Wilby. Will be. And so uh, just, just a nickname that my son gave me. Pro blogger will be. Awesome. Okay, so let's talk about pro blogging because, I mean, this is what you do, right? You see, I mean, you, you derive your income out of blogging and teaching blogging. This is, you, this is your life and your livelihood, yeah? Yep. I, I, I made a living just hitting the publish button for, for the longest time. And, and it's, it's, my wife just got a really good job. So I, I used to be able to say that's our primary source of income, but now my wife's beating me. Just don't tell her. <laughs> But so, it pays the mortgage. It pays my Silicon Valley mortgage. The blogging does. So I've got to ask, what what were you doing before the internet? Because you know, it's not like I mean, you didn't grow up with the internet, right? I mean, you've obviously no. you know you've been around a lot longer than most of us who are watching this podcast. So what were you doing before the internet, and and what made you decide at that point in your life to get involved in blogging? Okay, so I before the internet, I I lived in Japan for almost twenty years. Uh -huh. And so I taught university in Japan, and then my kids grew up, and they wanted to come back to America to go to school. So I brought my kids back to school, and then while they were here, there was divorce and unhappiness, and I got stuck back here in America. Right. So I decided I just want to go to a university and teach. You know, I have a PhD in education, so I think I'll just teach and live happily ever after, maybe write a few books about all the things I learned in Japan. And so I started doing that. I got a full-time job. I'm, you know, I'm, it wasn't tenured. It wasn't. I, mean, I can't talk now. I'm sorry. Okay, yes, you can do that. Me. You can have that. Just leave me alone, please. <laughs> And so I'm, I'm, I'm teaching at a university, minding my own business. We get a new president at the school. And the president at the school, for, for no good reason, decides he doesn't like me. I can't figure that out. Everybody likes me. But he didn't like me. So he fired me. Uh, what? You know, this is, uh, so the department chair at the university where I was teaching went to the president and said, what are you nuts? You can't fire Bill. Bill teaches everything. 
And so it was it was a, a graphic design, fashion design, interior design kind of a school. And I taught all the general education classes, public speaking, uh, psychology, and, and environmental science, all the general education stuff. And I taught at the time that nobody else wanted. They had classes Friday night at 8 o'clock. Well, I'll teach it. I don't care. And so I taught everything that nobody else would teach at the time that nobody else wanted. And the department chair said, you can't fire a bill because there will be too big a hole in our curriculum. Hmm. So the president backs down. He comes up to me and says, okay, Bill, you know what? I changed my mind. I think I'll keep you on staff. I said, that sounds good. Okay, now I quit. <laughs> because I didn't want him to sit in the back room. I don't want some knucklehead in the back of, sitting in the back corner of the room deciding how my family is going to play out. <laughs> and so from that impetus, I got online, and there were some forums, you know, what's a blog, what, what does blogging look like, just, just messing around. And some dude says, hey, you, you know a lot about Japan. There's a business network over here, and, and they're looking for writers. You, and they, maybe they don't have anything in international business. So I went to that, 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 that network. It doesn't exist anymore. I, I can tell you what it is. They ran into trouble with Google, and that's, I learned a lot of lessons that way. Uh -huh. But So I went over to that network, and I said, listen, I can write about business in Asia because I lived in Asia for 20 years. And they said, okay. And they hired me on to start writing for them. And it, the site took off, and they said, what else do you know? So I lived in Japan. I can write about Japan. And that one did okay. And all I did was just – I didn't know nothing. No, nothing. There, there was not, There was no SEO. There was no keyword this and title that. You just wrote and hit the publish button and hope things would happen. Mm. But I, I just wrote like a mad dog. I was. I would write 15 articles a day. Wow. You know, 15 articles a day, about 200, 250 words each. You, you do the math. I wrote about 90,000 words a month. Wow. And I did that for about a year and a half because I, I didn't know any different. So after I wrote about Asia, then I wrote about Japan. They said, what else do you know? So well, I, I know education, so let's write about education. So I got up to where I was writing five articles a day on each one of these niches, and I just kept writing like a mad dog. And I did that from every morning from four o'clock till about eight o'clock in the morning. Because at eight o'clock, I farmed myself out because I still had to teach while the network grew. You're not making any money, you gotta do something somewhere else. So from four o'clock to eight o'clock, I'm, I'm writing. And then from 8 o'clock till 12 o'clock, I'm farming myself out, teaching a class here, teaching a class there. And then there we had the, I don't know if you all have University of Phoenix in Australia? No. It's, it's, a, long, it's a giant online university. They have 100,000 students. Yeah. And they were hiring, so I hired myself out to them. And at one point, I had 300 online students. Wow. That I checked their work every afternoon, 300, one, one more, every day. And it drive you nuts. So I would write my 15 articles in the morning. I'd farm myself out after that. And then I would go do my online teaching. And then while my network grew, while my traffic began to grow, I would make more money. And then when I started making more money, I would stop teaching less. Mm. And then I could, eventually I could balance that all out. Wow. And then, I don't know why I'm telling that story, but I, I want to say I didn't – I had zero love when I was 51 when I started, or 52, 2006, March 2006, I, I turned 52 that year. So I, I went, you know, so when people say, oh, that's hard, I say, well, suck it up. What's yeah. so hard about that? Just what's so cool about blogging is that it's entirely within your control. Yeah. There's no begging. There's no deal making. There's no affiliate this. There's no, I'll give you my email or if you give me, your, oh, shut up. And, and you can do this. All you have to have is some expertise in your mind or be able to read so that you can gather that knowledge. And then just keep writing, keep hitting publish, and, and people will show up. I'm, I'm sorry about the long-winded answer. No, no, there. no. You know what? You've just, you've just like answered my next three or four questions in the exact <laughs> sequence that I was going to ask them. It's absolutely okay. perfect. Um, you know, so, so, what, so your, daily blogging, your daily blogging process today, is it, still kinda, is it still quite regimented that you have a certain amount of hours that you blog? No, see, it, it's not nearly that intensive now because you know, back, back there in, in the beginning, when I got up at four, uh, and I, so I, I'm writing about Asia. So I had four or five, probably five or six Japanese news sites bookmarked. Mm -hmm. And I had another six or seven Chinese sites bookmarked. And I had Korean and India and Thailand. So every morning I would get up and I would go to those news sites one by one. And I would read and I would read the headlines. I'd click, so I know something about that. Oh, I know something about that. And I would go through Japan and I'd go through China. And i just keep opening up tabs in my, in my browser. And, and at one point I'd have like 45 tabs opened up in my browser. And then the thing would crash. <laughs> and then I'd have to go do it again, but it's faster the second time. And so... The, so what I would do is I'd go fishing for ideas of things I write about. 
So today, you know, I, I, I have my daughter's website. And my daughter's website, if we go into the dashboard, if I go to the draft folder, I probably have 50 or 60 ideas in the draft folder. But all I, you know, I don't get stuck. All I need to go is open up, go to the draft folder, and start writing. Mm. And I have an, another website I'm working on. It's called speakoncruises.com. Mm. Yeah, so, so that I, 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 yeah, at, at, the end of, at the end of this month, uh, it's already December, so my wife and daughter and I and my in-laws, we're going to celebrate New Year's, the coming of the New Year, in the South Southern Caribbean Sea. Wow. Because I've been invited to go down and talk about social media. And so I created a website because people, how do you do that, Bill? How do you do that? Okay, well, let me, you know, there's always, there's always a way to you know, make, make a nickel or something. So I created Speak on Cruises. And in there, I, I have the draft folder. I have another 30, 40 ideas. So when I'm thinking, when I, when I went back to I'm thinking, I'm always fishing for ideas that can stimulate me. So there's, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. You know, Solomon made up his mind about that a long time ago. Yeah. So, but there's always a new perspective. And so I, I grab all these ideas, and I just grab URLs, I grab ideas, I just throw them in the draft folder. So that when the time comes, all I have to do is go open the dashboard, go to the draft folder, grab one, and start writing. Oh, man, I would seriously hope whoever's listening to this is paying attention because the, you've just laid out a process for publishing content consistently and regularly, researching your, your topic through news feeds, setting up drafts in WordPress with just an idea or a link or a headline, and then digging in and actually writing the content that you've got 30 or 40 drafts already set up. That's a fantastic blueprint or formula for actually publishing content on a regular basis. Well, you know, sometimes we don't feel like writing, but we feel like reading. Yeah. Sometimes we, we, we feel like, you know, so when I don't feel like writing, I read and grab ideas. And then when I feel like reading, you know, then I can do it the other way around. So I, I've always got something to do. So sometimes my hardest problem is, Dang, I just don't want to write because I don't want to dump. So when I don't want to dump, I fill up. Yeah. And so when I when I go to the gym, I'm at the gym every morning. I get up 4:30 to 5. I still get up that early. I go to the gym. I have a book in my hand because I can cycle. I used to do triathlons, right. so I used to do triathlons. So I can I can work the bottom of my body while the top of me is frozen. So I can read. <laughs> <laughs> you laughing? That's good. Cool. Get the idea. I just love your way with word, and it's a great visual. Like the bottom, the bottom legs are going around like this, and the top half is just reading a book and fueling up on your on the on the, on the information. It's great. Exactly, I'm reading a book, Hatching Twitter. I, I just finished the Winston Churchill. I'm doing Hatching Twitter because I talk about the founding of Twitter on, on the cruise ship, and so I'm I'm either stuffing stuff in or dumping things out. That's pretty much my process throughout the day. And you know, p p people who are creative people who are highly productive and and actually produce a lot of output, one of the things I've learned about them is that they actually take time. I call it restocking the ice chest. Like yep. if, if you serve up as many gourmet beautiful meals to your audience as you can, occasionally you need to go fishing and restock the ice chest. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, if, you know, if you don't have anything in, you don't have anything to give out. Yeah, exactly. Um, what's the key? You, you, so your best web traffic day is almost 600,000 page views and 100,000 in one hour, right? These are just ridiculous numbers. What's the key takeaway, you think, to writing content that gets that kind of eyeballs? I, said, we can, I can narrow this down. We've got 100,000 an hour. I've done 10,000 in a minute. <laughs> and I've done 4,384 in a second. But I, you can't maintain that forever. But I did. We, we we had like four thousand. You know, the Google Analytics has the the current view, the whatever that's called. And so we we were at like three thousand five hundred, four thousand two hundred, and we maintained that for about eighteen minutes. That was that was the day we got to six hundred thousand. Wow. All right. So how you know what is the key takeaway to writing content that attracts that kind of traffic? But you know, Thomas is old Thomas Jefferson quote. Thomas Jefferson says, "I have learned that the harder I work." The luckier I am. Yeah, it's great. And so, and so it's, it's nothing more than putting out enough stuff. You just keep putting things out that's relevant, that's good, that's on topic. And if you do that faithfully enough, long enough, sooner or later, something's got to catch on. So I, I remember the very first time I, I hit a hundred thousand in one day. It was way back in, in March. Or, 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 it was in the summer of '06. Uh, I wrote about this little Japanese girl. So I'm writing about Japan and, and business in Japan. So I'm writing about this little Japanese girl who's a ballet dancer and, and, and she's cute and she works hard and she's going to represent Japan in the Miss, the Miss Universe contest or something like that. So I wrote about that. About five months later, she wins Miss Universe and I'm number one. 
So I got like 96,000 people. Whoa, look at all these people coming. And that was something I had done four months ago. Mm. And so it was nothing more than just being faithful to putting out good content. Mm. Now, I have a little bit more long-winded. And I, I have a, a formula that I use. That I, I tell people, if you do these things, you can beat anybody at anything. I, I, I think I mentioned that at, at the Pressnomics. That's right. How to beat anybody at anything. You know, find out who your competitor is. Go to the website and count how many pages they have. Oh, they got 68 pages, do 70. They got 78 pages, do 170. Just do more than that person. And then quality, do it better than that person. You know, and don't, who cares about the 100, 190 to 210? Work the 10. Get your titles right. Get your, you know, get your keywords right. Get your captions on your images right. Get your internal external links. Get all these things right. Do more, do it better, and just do it consistently. So I know how many times I hit the publish button to get the first one million people to show up. I, I know, because I, in the beginning, nobody's coming, so you're bored, and, you, and, and so I, I kept an Excel spreadsheet, you know, and I used to predict during the morning, I, I, by 10 o'clock, I had this many people, so I'd try to guess how many people were coming. Wow. You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not smart, I, I, but I can add, multiply, subtract, and divide. That's all you need to do, so I, I just played around, so I know how many words I wrote. I know how many times I hit publish button. I know how many times, how many days it took me to get the first one million people to show up. You see, back in the beginning, you say, well, all you have to do is work hard. And when someone says work hard, the, the next thing you say, well, how hard is hard? Well, I know the answer to that question. You know, somebody said, let's go running. You say, well, how far are we going to run? So you know how to pace yourself. Well, so I know how many times to hit publish button. I know which parameters to use. I know how consistently I want to post. Now, I, I, I tell my client, you've got to post three times a day. Say, what? Three times a day, what are you nuts? I say, if you don't post three times a day, ain't nobody going to show up. Mm. So you got quality, you got quantity, you got quality, you got consistency, and then you got longevity. You stay with it. Now, this is one of the points we talked about at Pressnomics. Everybody gets tired. Mm. I get tired. I'm old. I'm twice as old as you. I'm twice as tired as you are. <laughs> everybody gets tired. But when everybody gets tired, especially when your competitor gets tired, don't get tired. Yeah. And you'll beat them. Yeah. Just keep going when everybody else quits, and you'll beat them. And quantity, quality, consistency, longevity, you can beat anybody in anything. And that was the moment when you said that at Pressnomics, that was the moment where I wrote down in my pad, I have to get Bill Ballou on the podcast because it was that, <laughs> it was that, it was that endurance that I heard is, you know, when your competitor gets tired, you don't <laughs> get tired. And that's actually what it takes to be number one, isn't it? it, it absolutely. Because, because everybody gets tired. Mm. And, and, and there's always bad times when, 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 when things are going good, you have to work really hard. When things are going bad, you should work really hard because nobody else is working. Yeah. And then sooner or later, it's going to come back around. You're going to be so much farther ahead. Yeah. You, you, you just don't quit. So when I, uh, this is another long-winded answer. I, so you know, when, I, when I was in Japan, I used to take my students on these, these charity walks, we'd call, we'd count, we'd call them. You, know, you, you take pledges, you go out, you walk five kilometers, 10 kilometers, and you gather money, and then you go off and you, and you save people in the Philippines or India, that sort of a thing. And I used to take my students on these 100-kilometer walks. And so we had a 24-hour time limit where we would try to cover 100 kilometers. And other people would sponsor us per kilometer to see how far we could go. You know, 100 kilometers, that's a long way. Mm. I don't know if you've ever walked that far, but it's, it's hard. It's, you know, I've done this 10 times. It's, it's miserable. I'm attempting to do it for the first time next year. I'm, I'm attempting to do an Oxfam 100-kilometer walk, I think, next May for the first time. So I'll let you know how I go. <laughs> What's your time limit? What's your time limit? 48 for hours. Wait, what are you, you can crawl that fast. <laughs> <laughs> and so so I, my, my fastest time was about 12 hours. I did 100K in about 12 hours. Wow. But that was about 40 pounds ago. I could probably take me three times that long. <laughs> But where I was headed, I would recruit my students to go with me. And they said, Sensei, you're nuts. We ain't doing that. But every now and then, you know, I, I'm persistent. I'm, I'm, I'm stubborn that way. So I said, you guys want to go with me. And I could see a clear distinction between my students. There were students who say, okay, Sensei, we will go. And I will try hard. I will do my best. I will give you every effort I can. You can count on me to be there as, 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 with all my might. Uh, okay, that's good. And then there was an, just a one or two other students. And they would sit there and they would Real quiet and everything. I wonder how long it takes to go 24 hours. It's very different. You know, the person who tries hard, their feet start hurting. Well, I've tried hard, now my feet hurt. I can't do it anymore. Mm. Then there's the other people who say, well, I just wonder how long that takes. They have made up their mind, I'm going to do this. Mm. It's just a matter of time. Mm. I had a little girl, Emiko, Emiko Kobayashi, 17 years old. She said, okay, Bill, I'll go with you. 
I said, we're out walking. We, had, we went from midnight to midnight. It comes around midnight. Everybody's home except Emiko. So where's Emiko? So I have, to, I have to go looking for her. We pack up all the aid stations. Everybody goes home. We put everything away. I went looking for Emiko. She's at about 87 and a half kilometers. I said, Emiko, time to go home. She starts sniffling. She said, I said, Emiko, we got to go home. There's, it's, it's midnight. There's nobody out here. Nope. I said, Emiko, there's no food station. There's nobody can help you. There's nobody. There's no flashlights. You've got to get in the car. She went 27 and a half hours. She finished that thing because she had made up her mind. I'm going to finish what I start. Wow. You, you, you see, it's that kind of persistence that makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. And don't try hard. Make up your mind you're going to do something and then go. And then it. do it. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get all. No, windy. no, no. It's no, no, no. It please, uh, you know, as many tangents as you like. It's fabulous. There's, there's a, there's a great. I can't remember who it was, but there's a great quote. Uh, there is no try. There is do or do not. There is do right, or right. do not. There is no try. Yeah, there's no try. Yeah. Anybody can try. So what if you try? Yeah. At, when I saw you speak at Pressnomics, you were larger than life. I mean, you are larger than life. Your passion and your energy literally was jumping off the stage, and it was like everyone. I think you were like. I don't know, second or third speaker up, and everyone was like, wow, who is this guy? And I, I kind of, I cut through the kind of performance, and I actually heard this message about just hit the publish button. Your answer to every question was just hit the publish button. So what, what happens when you work with a client who says that they haven't got anything to say or they haven't got anything to blog about? Well, that, 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 that's a tough answer because some people don't have anything to blog about. So I tell that person, you just you don't have to blog. Just write one time, a little size about this big, and put a bunch of zeros on it, and I'll do it for you. Right. <laughs> because, you know, because some people, you know, some people don't think they're writers. Sure. And sure. And, and people aren't writers. You know, we all have to work our strengths and let somebody else take care of our weaknesses. But I happen to think, you know, there, there's always something to write. No matter you know, what, you know, I go back to my toilet dude. No, what, what are you going to say about? He wrote yeah. five hundred and some odd posts about toilets mm. and bathtubs and faucets mm. and, and and washers. Well, who cares? Well, he just broke that down mm. into little bitty pieces, and then after he wrote about forty of them in one hyperlocation, he rewrote them, made them all original, and wrote about another hyperlocation. Then he wrote about another hyperlocation. Mm. So he just over I mean, just analyzed it completely, broke it all down, and off he went. And he's he got more phone calls than you what to do with. Yeah. So there, there's always something to write about. We just need to, this is something I do with people. I brainstorm with them about yeah. how to break yeah. these things down. I got my, my cutting board girl. Oh, how much can you say about cutting boards? Yeah. Well, how many different kinds of woods are there? I, I don't know. So one of the ideas we gave her, for example, is, well, if I was a cutting board and they were all homemade, I would make cutting boards shaped like, okay, how many shapes are there in the world? <laughs> There you go. She's going to write about that forever. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, you know, there's, look at Obama. He's shaped like a, you know, like a peanut or something, whatever. Yeah. And so there, there's always a way to come up with stuff to write about. It's a fear, isn't it? So I, the, the, when I hear people say, I've got nothing to blog about or, you know, I'm not a writer or no one would listen to me, I think it's a fear of publishing. Why do you think people are scared to hit the publish button? Well, you've, I, I looked at that question and I thought, man, what am I going to say here? Because... I'm not afraid. I, I don't know why anybody would be afraid. No, no. You know, if, if, if you know, we call it one beggar telling another beggar where to find food. <laughs> if you have something good, why wouldn't you want to share that with somebody? Yeah. I mean, the, I, I tell people the reason most people are lousy speakers is because they have nothing to say. Yeah. The reason most people are lousy writers because they have nothing to write. If you're really good at you, if you're really good at what you do, it can be argued you almost have a moral obligation to let other people know mm -hmm. that you can make their life better. Mm -hmm. So just tell them that. It's kind of it's kind of funny, isn't it? You just hit on something there. I you know I always used to think it was selfish to kind of stand up in front of people and put yourself out there as you know an expert for want of a better word. I used to think, oh, you know, I must be, uh, you know, people must think I'm an egomaniac or being really selfish for doing this. But in actual fact, I've come to learn that it's selfish not to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, if you know the answer to a problem, why wouldn't you tell people that? Yeah, yeah. In fact, if you knew the answer, then somebody had a problem and you didn't help them out. That would be egotistical. Correct. Um, we, have, we have an old dude, old philosopher dude here. And, and, and you know who Will Rogers? You ever heard of Will Rogers? Yeah, yeah. He's an old guy sits around the corner. Will Rogers used to say, if you can do it, it ain't bragging. Yeah, that's great. I love that one. I read that on your and website. So if I can do it, uh, if I can't do it, and I tell you I can't, then I'm bragging. But if I can't do it, and I tell you, then then I'm trying to help you out here. Yeah.
That's gold. Um, you wrote a book called uh, Marketing with Social Media. It's now being marketed through um, Kendall Hunt to all of the MBA courses across the states, right? How did the, That's right. How did, how, why did you write a book, and how did the deal with Kendall Hunt come about? Well, so earlier this year, so I, I'm going to have to start saying last year pretty soon, but earlier this year, I went to a university in downtown San Jose, International Technological University, and there was a bunch of business students. They had an MBA class, and they had marketing classes and all that sort of stuff. And so I went up to the, cl- to the school, and I offered to teach a class for free. I said, I'll do it for free because I want to be able to validate these things that I'm, take, uh, that I'm teaching. Nice. And, so, and they wouldn't let me do it for free, so they, they paid me out 3000 bucks or whatever. So I still, I don't, I don't want the money. Just let me do it for free. So what I want is a control group. Give me some students that will do exactly what I tell them or I'll give them an F. <laughs> and so they did. Ah, it was great. I, they gave me 73 students, 73 MBA students. Thought they were going to play around on Facebook and Twitter. They don't know the difference between social networking and social media. And so I, I, I got on them like ugly on ape. It was great. So 10 of them didn't show up. 10 of them quit. And 10 of them I had to throw out for cheating. <laughs> But I got 43 solid case studies of people, of students, you know, MBA level students, 25, 26 years, doing exactly what I told them to do. And I could prove this is, look, you do this, this happens, you do this, that don't happen. And so that's why I offered to teach the class. And in order to teach that class, I needed to have a textbook to go with it. And so what do you do when you don't got a textbook? You sit around and write like a mad dog until you got one. And so I just, you know, I just pounded out all the lessons I'd learned Stuck them in a book, put them all together, and then we have we have coffee shops. So I'm I'm, I'm too cheap to get an office. Why, why would anybody pay money on an office when you could do it for free at a coffee shop? And so I'm I'm sitting in a coffee shop, and there's this, this, this bald headed dude, and he he's kind of a grumpy old fellow. He's really foul mouthed, but that's okay. I love him. Frank, as it turned out, was a publisher. He was an editor for Kendall Hunt, and he said, "Well, I, you know, we struck up a conversation. I try to find professors who have textbooks, and then I can market that for them." I said, "Well, what if I said, what if I had a textbook and I was teaching? Well, I could publish that for you." And we became friends, just wow. you know, eating coffee and donuts at a, at a at a coffee shop. And now Frank's one of my really really good friends. Wow! And so he's taken the book, he's published it, and now it's going to come out in the hardback form. And now it's only digital now. They're going to do the hardback thing. We just finished that like I don't know, maybe a month ago, and he sent it out to uh, 200, I don't know, 200 different MBA courses, and they've gotten about 50 or 60 requests for review copies. Wow. So sometime next year, it'll start showing up either spring semester or next fall semester, but I've got 40 case studies that I can beef this thing up with. You must be, you must be chuffed about that, man. That's, you must be extremely proud. Uh, I don't uh, that, I chuffed. I never heard that. <laughs> you guys talk funny down there. I'm going to teach you all English. <laughs> no, I, I am so excited about it. Cause, yeah, I, you know, when I was at Pressnomics, I tried to tell the WordPress dudes that at their fingertips, they literally have the power to change the world. Yeah. They really do. I, you know, I, it's, it's, not a, a, it's not a passion to me. I, I, I think the word passion is way overrated. Oh, you got to love you. got to love this. You know, the, the fires of passion burn out. Mm. You know, it's that hunger, mm. that, that, it's that resolve that'll stay with you a whole lot longer. It's that yeah. commitment to yeah. that person. Well, the, the word I like to use more than anything else is, is mission. Mm. You know, I, I have a mission that I want the world to be a better place. Mm. I, I, you know, call me idealistic, call me an idiot. I, I do. And you can do these things. If you have a sound, solid message, this is how you get that message out. Mm. And I just, I have, I, I, I want to tell people that they can reach the world. Mm. You know, one of the things I'd really, really like to do if I were rich and didn't have to ride in the back of airplanes, I, I believe that I could give a job to anybody in the entire world. I can. All, all they need is a domain name and hosting and WordPress. Mm. And I'll pay for the domain and hosting for crying out loud. All they need is WordPress and a little bit of know-how. It's not that hard to make 50 bucks, 100 bucks a month doing this. You can feed the entire, you know, South Asia all the way over to North Africa. You know, I have a mission that I would like to give a free voice to everybody in the entire world. Now, is, is that too far-fetched? Well, maybe it is, but that's who I am, and that's what I want to do. And it helps you get out of bed every day, and it helps you keep hitting the publish button. You know what? Yeah, absolutely. It's a mission of Trump passion. 
any day. Yeah, yeah. You know, hunger, resolve, you know, commitment. Those, those, those are the words I like. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, let's get into the Elevate round. This is a quick lightning okay. round aimed at our audience who, as you know, are WordPress freelancers. For those that don't know, WP Elevation is a business accelerator program for WordPress consultants. So I'm sure. going to ask Bill a series of quick questions and just quick answers off the top of your head. What's the number one thing any freelancer or consultant needs to know? How to get more traffic to their customers. Nice, nice. What's the best thing you've ever done to find new customers? I, I put up more content on my website. People find me. I keep putting it up there. They keep finding me. Beautiful. How do you stop competing on price? I never did compete on it in the first place. Yes. Oh, I love that answer. <laughs> why, why would I do that? This is what it costs. Okay. Oh, I love that answer. Any tips on writing better proposals? Uh, writing better, what you really want is for people to search you out. When people are searching you out, getting good search engine results, you've got, you got conversions because they've already come looking for you. I, love I don't you. have to write a I proposal. You, ask me, how much can I charge you? <laughs> I love you, Bill. <laughs> love, okay. I'm Fav glad you're there and I'm here. <laughs> favorite, tool for, uh, favorite tool for managing customer relationships? Okay. Well, my, okay you're not going to like this answer. My favorite tool is Kevin. <laughs> Kevin, I just tell him to do it. I, I, I hate these things. I hate tools. I, I, I just, I'm a front-end guy. He's a back-end guy. So I said, I think he uses this thing called Insightly. Right, Insight. slightly. Yeah, I know that it's one, called, but that's great. So your favorite it's, tool it's, it's is to delegate great. it to someone who's good at it, right? That's that's good. Yeah, that's, yeah, I just yeah. To Kevin. What's the best way to keep a, a client on track? Yell at Kevin. <laughs> Yell at Kevin. That is fantastic. Well, I, there's Josie, Josie and Kevin. Those are my two senior people. So I don't need thirty people to talk to. I need two people to talk to. Right. I got one. You know, one is is, is farming. You know, is closing deals. And the other one's is delivering product. Yeah. So I just make sure they produce. Okay, cool. So we're back after we dropped out, and Bill was just saying that your favorite tool for managing customer relationships was to yell at. No, your favorite tool was Kevin, and the best way to keep a client on track was to yell at Kevin. Right. <laughs> That's right. We 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 have regular meetings. We you know we we text back and forth. So you know I try and keep it as remotely as as, as possible because you know freedom and especially here in Silicon Valley is everything. Yeah. So we don't overload ourselves with meetings. We don't overload ourselves with 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 reports. You know, we, we, I'm able to keep track pretty much in my head what's going on, and I just just keep regular contact with him and with Josie on my sales side. Right. So the important takeaway here is to have people in the right seats doing the right jobs, yeah? Well, I actually, because be fr quite frankly, I hate doing that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. And I, 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 you know, people, if people don't get it, I say, you're too dumb, never mind. And see, Kevin would never say that. Right. <laughs> Any ideas? So we are in the middle of the elevation round, by the way. Any ideas uh, for getting referrals from your existing clients? Well, so one one of the best ways I do that is a lot of my a lot of here in the valley, people live in these little referral groups. Is what they do. Yeah. And so they gather together for breakfast, for lunch, or whatever. And so a lot of my clients are in these referral groups, and they invite me to come present. So I go there, I talk about inbound marketing, this is what it can do. It's like a simpler version of what I did for Pressnomics. Yep. And so my clients put me in front of their friends. That, that's a real powerful way to do it for us. Absolutely. Uh, and finally, in the elevation round, what's the number one thing you can do to differentiate yourself? What I do works. Every, everything else, you know, my, 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 my strongest pitch is transparency. Mm. These people have been burned by SEO this and promises of that, and we can't tell you it's trade secrets and all that nonsense. I say, I'll give you complete transparency. I'll tell you everything I know. I'll give you access to the dashboard. I'll log in with Google Analytics. I'll show you how to read everything. Transparency is how I differentiate myself. Plus, I deliver results. Awesome. I actually thought during that elevation round that every answer was going to be hit the publish button, but you surprised me. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little bit more depth than you thought. <laughs> you want me to say hit the public? No, we. Out, out, out. So how so, you should have, how do you deliver results, Bill? Oh, thanks for asking me, Troy. You hit the, the cop, pick publish button. Hit the publish button. So what's the future for Bill Ballou? Well, the, the future for Bill Ballou is I'd really like for to not have to yell at Kevin so much. I want him to be smarter and just be able to do these things without me. You know what? What I like to do is meet people like you. What I like to do is go to Pressnomics. What I like to do is be on the cruise ships. What I like to do is go to Singapore. You know, I'd like to be a little bit richer so I don't have to ride in the back of the plane. I'm too old and it's too far away to sit in the back. <laughs> you know, what, I, what I'd like to do is, is 
you know, as idealistic as it sounds, be able to give jobs to people all over the world. Mm. I'd like to show them the, the real power of, uh, of, of WordPress. Mm. You know, all, all you need is a, a WordPress platform. You, know, a, you don't even need a good domain name. Bad domain names work as well. Yeah. And I'd like to be able to teach people how they can provide for themselves. And what's the future of inbound marketing look like, do you think? Ah, yeah. See, that's that's. I was, I was hoping we'd run out of time before we got there. <laughs> that 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 is a that is a huge challenge because people don't get it yet. Mm. They, you know, they just so many people just don't get it yet. They they don't understand what this whole inbound marketing is, and and, and we we wrestle. I don't know how, if you've solved this problem. You know, I call it content marketing. I call it inbound marketing. I call it social media marketing. Mm. And then I have to differentiate between social media and social. Uh, and social networking, and then we call it, you know, I call it storytelling. This is a big buzzword here in, in the Valley. I don't know about you all, but people tell stories. They say, tell stories. So I tell, oh, get a website, tell stories. Mm. Just get a website, tell stories, and it'll go to work for you. Mm. And then I whip out my, my Google Analytics and show them how to do that. I said, if you have a website and you tell stories that are on topic, mm. hit the publish button, hit the public. Look, here's, and I show them how the contact us forms get filled out. I show them how it converts. Mm. And so the, the future of inbound marketing, I, I, I still feel like I'm in an education mode. Yep. I, I feel like I'm, I'm ahead of the curve here. That's a good thing, but I'm, I may be a little bit too far ahead of the curve because people are the curve because people don't quite get it yet. Yeah. And you know, SEO, SEO experts have burned people so much that it's, it's just a challenge. Oh, you're just another one of them, you know, it's, it's just a and you're just going to slap us. You're just going to whatever. And so it, it, the future of inbound marketing, inbound marketing is where it's at. You know, we, we talked earlier about where I live. I, I, I live literally three miles from, from Google headquarters. Mm. And there are people who sit around in rooms, you know, about the size, six, seven, eight people sit around a room, and they just brainstorm for all their might. They get whiteboards out, and they're trying to guess what Google wants. Them, what Google wants. Mm. Well, and that, over to Google headquarters, there's six or seven, eight people sitting in a room trying to figure out what real people want yeah and they just keep missing in the dark mm. and so google i and i'm not a fan of the company but they do tremendous work they provide a tremendous service to publishers and they're getting very good at reading 150 200 words and understanding what that's about mm. and making that searchable mm. so it's just good solid storytelling that's on top it's got to be on topic if it's not relevant you're fighting a losing battle and so, for for me, the future of inbound marketing is, is, is trying to make a break with all the all that the SEOs have burned us over, and try and make it more personable. Trying to make it real, you know, trying to show them, look, just do this; it works. All you have to do is, is publish good content. You know, good is defined by these ten things. Do it consistently well for a long enough time, and you'll beat anybody. Great advice. That's, that's what I'm doing. Uh, all right, just before we wrap up, the details of this competition, I'm giving away a copy of Bill's new book. It is in the digital format because that's how it exists at the moment. It is called Marketing with Social Media and it is being marketed to all of the MBAs across the states, as you've heard Bill talk about. How to enter this competition is leave a comment under this video and tell us the number one thing you have learned from this interview and how that is going to change what you're doing in your business. And I'll get Bill to swing by in a couple of weeks and award the prize. Sound good, Bill? That sounds good. And if they don't know what the one thing they learned is, tell them it's hit the publish button. <laughs> no, just tell them right there. Hit the pub. The more often, it, you know, it's a, it's a fundamental law of the universe. If you want to be found, give people more stuff to find. Yeah. So people say, well, you know, if I don't know anything else, what is the number one thing you can do to get more people to find you? Just put, give them more stuff to find. Hit the publish button. Just keep pounding on that publish button. You know, with relevant content and all that sort of thing, but just pound on that publish button, it'll work. Hmm. And I, I've proven that. I took my 43 students at the end, and I proved that it works. Wow. Give me any niche and I can, make, I can get people to come find it. It works. I, I, wonder, what the, I wonder what the answer is going to be to my next question. What's the Hit number the one piece of advice you would give any entrepreneur trying to build their own business? Hit the publish button. <laughs> yeah, any, any entrepreneur, you know, de decide on your focus. So the, I, you know, I have a cheat sheet. Remember the cheat sheet I gave you away? Mm. Number one on that cheat sheet was a tagline. You know, tagline is what do you do in 10 words or less? What is your business about in 10 words or less? No adjectives, no adverbs, no prepositions, no conjunctions, and, and, and no articles. You know, no A's and ands, no if ands or buts, no ands and the, no adjectives. What, are you, what is your business about in 10 words or less? Mm. Now, write about that a thousand times and you'll, be, you'll win. Wow. You know, 
so the, the tagline, number one tag, you know what the tag, you know, we all know what the tagline is in the general settings right up there. Just yep. tell people what you do in 10 words or less, and then just keep writing about that forever and ever. I'm just writing this down. Uh, this is one thing I love about my job interviewing people like you is I get free consulting, which is awesome. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so thank you very much for that. Um, Bill, where can people reach out to you and uh, thank you for the interview? Uh, they can uh, they can go to billbelew.com, B-I-L-L-B-E-L-E-W.com, or they can write to me at bill at billbelew.com. Don't spam me. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm sure they won't. We've got a pretty uh, pretty discerning you know audience. What? That's fantastic. Bill um, Belew, the, 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 the Bill Belew is Elvis Presley's, Elvis Presley's costume designer. Is that right? Same name, same spelling, exact same as that. He died about two years ago. I got so much traffic. Bill, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Finally, Bill Ballou, who would you like me to try and interview and why? Ah, yeah. see, there's another one where I was hoping we'd run out of time because I thought <laughs> long and hard about this. And this is going to give you some insight into the kind of person I am. Oh, what did something? Okay, wait. Okay, I, you know, I don't look up to a whole lot of people. It's not because I'm better or greater than other people. It's because I want to do things the way I want to do them. Mm -hmm. I'm a thinker. And I want to be original. I, I prefer to make my own mistakes. Mm. And so I, I thought real hard, you know, who, who do I want to, you to interview and why would I want to interview? And then it finally occurred to me, and this is it's going to sound a little bit self-serving, but do, do you remember the slides that I was showing? Mm. The, the pro blogger will be and all the will be characters and all that was going around? Yeah. I'd like for you to interview the guy who created that. Right. You know, he and the self-serving part is that's my son. Ah. My son, he's he's 31 years old. He he worked as an animator in Japan mm -hmm. for about the. It, it, he taught himself how to draw animation, mm -hmm. and then he jumped through all the hoops. Everybody else went off to animation school. He taught himself how to do it. He went to a Japanese company and started drawing animation for them. So he says he just he can draw anything. He can create anything. He can make anything come alive with with pictures. He's also an internationally award-winning pianist. Wow! Class, I mean, classical style. He, he, he got Beethoven, Brahms, Bach, and now we got Blue. He would call him the fourth B. <laughs> and the thing is, he won't listen to me because I'm his dad. And so you have at your resources within your network people who can change a life like his. Mm. And he has something that could offer every single one of the people on your list. Mm. So how about nurturing somebody who wants to make a huge difference. So That's what, who I would ask you to interview. What's his name, Bill? His name is Benjamin. Benjamin. Well, yep, Benjamin. Benjamin, B-E-N-J-A-M-I-N, Ballou. Benjamin Ballou. This is the first Bang. time we've had anyone suggest a family member, and I'm all up for it, so I'm going to get Kristen, uh, who organizes the interviews, to get in contact with Benjamin and get him on the podcast. Well, that's it. that'd be great. You, you, but you see where I'm headed? You know so much, and he won't listen to me. <laughs> and you, but you, you get the idea. You, we, let's teach somebody else how to do the things that we know. And let's see if we can't nurture them along and, and, and give them the exposure because he has so much to offer and your network has so much to offer him. Let's make it a mutual thing and we can all live happily ever Beautiful. after. Beautiful. Sounds good to me. I'm coming I hope to get that's you, not Benjamin. too self-serving, but I thought hard of that. You can, you can thank your dad for this one. Keep your eyes in your inbox. We're, uh, we're coming to get you for an interview. Hey, Bill Ballou, thank you so much for spending some time with us on the WP Elevation Podcast. Really appreciate the time you've taken and wish you all the best with all of your future endeavors. And um, you have inspired me and motivated me to hit the publish button more often and more frequently. Thank you very much. Troy, thank you so much for your kind offer to let me to share with you all down under. It, it's been my extreme pleasure. Thanks for letting my little girl come on here and say hello. Say bye-bye, no Troy. No problem. See you, Mia. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye.